welcome to the Bippity Boppity Basics Podcast, a lifestyle podcast with a magical twist. I'm your host, Caitlin May, and I'm a self-proclaimed Disney adult and childless millennial who is obsessed with Harry Potter, Florida sunshine, and all things basic. Here on the podcast, I chat weekly about everything Disney, Harry Potter, theme park news, and navigating my basic late 20s life. Welcome back, Magical Basics, to another episode of the Bippity Boppity Basics podcast. I am your uh, temporary host, Jonathan May, and joining me today is your regular host, Katie. I just figured, you know, as as the producer of the show, we've talked a lot about the season and, and how we wanted to wrap things up and how we wanted to kind of just give a little snapshot of maybe some of the highlights of, of the season and some of our key takeaways and just put it all in a nice little package with a nice little bow. So that's what we're doing today. That's why I get to see it, sit in Katie's normal chair. She gets to sit in the guest chair. She has no idea what I'm going to ask her and nope. neither do I. So <laughs> <laughs> we are on it. We're just like winging it. And I honestly think that we're using this episode as just a way to like decompress for sure. Off of like the last, I don't know, how many months has season three been? Like five? Math is hard, but since what, <laughs> September, October, something like that? October, yeah. October 1st. October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Seven. Seven? Seven, seven months. I mean, we had some breaks in there, but yeah, seven months. It's almost months. a baby. It's almost a baby. <laughs> it's a preemie. <laughs> um, She's never going to let me host again. So I would love for you to be on the show more. <laughs> it was like pulling teeth to get Jonathan to come on this episode. So if you want more of him in seasons four and beyond, let us know. All right. So we are going to get into some <clears throat> questions. But before we start there, uh, we're not going to do a full broadcast. But I know that there has been some crazy mm-hmm. uh, stuff in the news. So Katie... If you want to give us a little highlight of what's been happening in the news, we'll start there and then yeah. we'll get into the episode. Yeah, some of the highlights out of just Disney World mainly, because I feel like the international parks and Disneyland haven't really been as crazy as Disney World has been lately. Um Expedition Everest is finally reopened after it's like tiny refurbishment. Disney never like said what they were refurbishing, so I'm interested to see like if it's actually different or not. Or Unfortunately, if it was just... I will not be riding it to find out. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan, so it's a hard no from me. Jonathan does not vibe with Everest. That ride goes sideways, I tell you. <laughs> Um, so I'm interested to see if it's like something crazy drastic or if it was just like, my guess is probably it's like routine maintenance, but, um, it opened a day early actually. So that's pretty awesome. And then another thing that is pretty exciting as well, especially if you have an upcoming trip to Disney world and you're getting genie plus is that Everest is now included in genie plus and it's not its own lightning lane anymore. Um, so far, That's only going to be through August 7th, but I'm not sure if Disney has any plans to extend that or only stop it at the 7th or what it has going on. Maybe they decided to do this because it's been closed for a while now. So that is something pretty significant out of Disney. Another thing is that our character hugs are back, uh, which is very exciting. I am itching to go hug a character, so hopefully... I can do that soon. We are going to Epcot for Dapper Day, so maybe we need to find a character that we can for sure hug. Um, but character hugs are back. Another COVID news story alongside that is that masks are no longer required on Disney transportation anymore. So if you're fully vaccinated, um, you're able. Actually, there's no literally no, yeah, there's no, no rules other anymore. <laughs> well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, they do, they're like, if you're fully vaccinated, you know, the recommendation, but what I was trying to say is I don't think there's a single spot in Disney that masks are required across the board anymore. No, I think transportation was like the last of it. So that is a pretty significant thing as well. 
Um, something else that's super exciting is uh, out of Ep- actually Epcot's been popping lately. It- it's gone from a park of walls and it's slowly like it's slowly knocking down the walls, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, there are no longer construction walls around Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind oh, because I didn't those know that. yeah those previews have been open now. The cast member previews. Just passed. The pass holder previews are about to start, and the DVC previews. Uh, our pass holder preview is the ninth. I think it's yeah, May ninth, May nine or ten, something like that. Um, so follow us on like our socials. I probably won't post it on. Mm, maybe I'll post like a little bit on the podcast social, but definitely follow on my personal one. To I won't give away any spoilers, obviously, but I'll kind of take you along that experience. It's our first ever pass holder preview. So that's exciting in and of itself. And then I'm low key terrified. I'm not yeah, gonna same. Lie, but I'll ride it once. Same, same. <laughs> I'm just cool. like gonna like give myself a bunch of seasick medicine. And I'm gonna start in Mexico. Hope that it <laughs> <laughs> get some liquid luck. Um. So our pass holder preview, I will definitely let you know how that is. So follow me on Instagram for sure. So that's very exciting. That coaster opens to the general public on Memorial Day weekend. I think it's 27th of May. And the last, oh, Epcot, still on Epcot. This is what happens when I don't have my like new stories listed out. My ADD kicks in. Um, Connections Cafe has also opened in Epcot with a brand new Starbucks. The inside of it looks super nice. The food um, is all kind of just like generic American food, I guess, like burgers, salads, sandwiches, pizzas, things like that. So if you're not as adventurous to eat in the showcase, this gives you a little bit better of an option for just like standard basic food. Um, And then the last new story out of Disney that is pretty significant is (laughs) that this week... (sighs) This week, um, some stuff happened. The Florida. <laughs> if you've not heard about this, you're really you're you're not in the news. You're not on social media. Yeah, this, this is this is beyond Disney. Yeah, this, this is, is this beyond is, the Disney community. This is a like lot. There's just a lot here. <laughs> news, probably worldwide. Honestly, yeah. um, Disney, the Florida Senate actually voted to end the Reedy Creek. Um, the special status. Yeah, basically situation. Disney's special status to basically like operate as its own county. Um, it's not supposed to go into effect until 2023. Disney has not issued like we're going to appeal this or we're going to fight this or whatever. So I'm not really sure what Disney is thinking about all of this, but um, it could look like us Florida residents paying a nice little chunk of money. A little chunk of change. If um if this actually is able to be set in motion. So we shall see. We shall see. But those are basically the the um biggest highlights out of the news this week. Love it. Yeah. All right. I'm nervous. I don't know what you're going to ask me and I feel like I'm going to just like Answer everything that I ever did in school, dumb. I did not prep for this. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just figured, you know, the whole point of the show is to like have conversations about Disney and yeah. it's just friends hanging out and we're kind of like best friends because we hang out all the time. Uh, so. Yeah, we're kind of forced to do that. <laughs> also, together. I have listened to every single episode like three times. So yeah, Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan, um, when I went solo for season three, Jonathan's big thing to help me out was that he was going to take on the responsibility of editing. So big round of applause for Jonathan. Um, he not only like produces it from behind the camera, he's literally been behind the camera for ev- every single episode that we've recorded for season three, which is why it looks so good and um, sounds so good. And then you've edited every single episode of season three which is why the graphics are so good the pacing is so good um yeah so i i'm glad that i finally convinced you to be in front of the camera this time 
We're going to take a quick break and listen to a word from our sponsor. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Hello, Magical Basics. Have you been thinking about starting your own podcast, but you don't really know where to begin? I completely understand, because when Bippity Boppity Basics first launched, I felt the same exact way. Thank goodness I had Anchor to help me. If you've never heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. I know what you're thinking. Katie, is it really that easy? Oh, it is. So let me tell you how. First, it's completely free. We love that. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And then Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's literally everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you so much to Anchor for sponsoring this episode. And we're back. Oh Oh, my God, I hate you. (laughs) I just want to talk about how we're just sitting with our Pua and our little Pegasus in our laps. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with my hands. So yeah, it's like that episode of 30 Rock where he has to have two coffee cups to like get through it. (laughs) I feel that really hard. It is actually super comforting to like have like a little stuffed animal this is why you should watch us on youtube because yeah. you get to see you get our, to see pua and pegasus our uh i'm kind of jealous merchandise that you have problem that we have pegasus was my special gift when katie could not think of a letter on our jonathan day at epcot yeah if you don't know what we're talking about go to my personal youtube channel links will be below <laughs> <laughs> and watch our jonathan day at, at not epcot no, at dac an, yeah animal kingdom yeah it was, I got to buy, the the last letter of my name is N, and I got to buy something <laughs> nice from the gift shop. That was the Even end. though we definitely, like, you were guessing, like, Navi River Journey, and I was like, dang it, that would have been a great N. <laughs> so my something nice was Pegasus. Literally, when we walked into that store for you to pick out what it was, uh, my eye immediately locked on the pegasus on the wall and i was like please god let him choose this pegasus because he's so freaking cute all right so we'll just kind of start off with something a little simple because the whole point of the lightning round that we put into the episode was kind of an icebreaker a lot of the guests that we have on this show we don't really know personally we did a Uh, lot i would say like (laughs) 90 5% of the season's guests we met that day that we recorded with them. And that's a testament to, you know, the community and and how how great it is and how Disney Mm -hmm. can bring people together because you can't tell us in those episodes. It's like we've been friends forever. Yeah. That was the goal. But we we have the lightning round just to kind of break the ice, get the guests comfortable. And it's a lot of fun to hear the different answers. And so one thing Katie has said consistently through the entire season is, I wish I could answer some of these questions. So here is your chance. The iPad was upside down. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really excited for this, but I'm also nervous because the lightning round, that's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. All right. So now I have to like (laughs) hold an iPad and Pegasus. (laughs) Here, I'll do the clock. I can do the clock. I I got it. I'm just going to like set it here. All right. All right. Two minutes on the clock. Starting now. Okay. What is your favorite sidekick? Disney sidekick? Yes. See, here we go. <laughs> um, probably Pascal. Fair. Favorite villain? Maleficent or Hades? Disney film you find boring? Oh. You've had an entire seven months to think about these. Snow White. <laughs> if you start in Mexico or Canada? Canada. If you got a Harry Potter related tattoo, what would it be and why? I and have one. Let's see them. <laughs> I have one. Just one. Um, it's Fleur Delacour's wand because she is everything. And then the little stars from the books. What is a Disney song that gets stuck in your head? <sighs> What's the one? The Encanto one. I've been singing. Pressure. Mm. Yeah, I've been singing that one a lot lately. Have you ever watched a Disney movie in another language? Yes. I watched The Little Mermaid in French. 
because in France, in France class, <laughs> in French class, he told us to watch movies that we were familiar with to like brush up on our language. Favorite Disney ride? Oh my gosh. Okay. Voyage of the Little Mermaid. I mean, yeah. 7D. <laughs> Which Disney villain could you be in a committed relationship with? Uh... <laughs> Dr. Facilier. I feel like he'd cook a mean gumbo. <laughs> Harry Potter death that makes you cry. Oh my God. So many. Hedwig. Probably the first Hed- one's the animal. Yeah, yeah. Hedwig, the first one is the animal. Cedric Diggory. Don't even get me started about that death. <laughs> Least favorite Disney song. I don't have one. I like them all. Probably a Snow White one. I don't really like Snow White. Favorite Harry Potter character. Fleur Delacour. And favorite Disney park. Hollywood Studios. But if I could only have a Disney, if I could only visit one Disney park for the rest of my life, it would be Magic Kingdom. But my favorite is Hollywood Studios. Why, why is your favorite Hollywood? I don't know that I know that. Um, I feel like growing up as a kid who like wanted to act, I loved the old Hollywood aspect of growing up as Hollywood Studios being MGM. So like the old Hollywood vibe, but also like I grew up when um, they had the great movie ride and they had the backlot tour. And so it was very geared towards like filmmaking and acting and stuff. And now I love it for the Star Wars. And I don't know, the vibes are right in that park. That's fair. I think that the Star Wars is one of the most like immersive experiences in a Disney park and definitely shows where they could go if they continue to invest a lot more money (laughs) yeah which i know that's a a trade-off when they're trying to balance you know running parks that actually make the money and also provide new unique experiences but yeah it is very different than a lot of the other uh experiences Mm -hmm. i something that triggered when you were don't eat the plastic our cats are weird something that triggered when you were going through all your answers was a favorite sidekick being pascal i agree that pascal is the best sidekick He's so funny. But his think, comedic, his like body comedy yes. is so funny. But I think that there needs to be a category of like sidekick that got screwed over and was such a missed opportunity because you're holding him in your hands. <gasps> I agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> Pua had oh so God. much more potential. To I be agree. The be- like every scene that Pua was in was fantastic. But yeah. then they just like did the rest of the movie without The him. fact that. I- okay. So I'm going to have to kick her out. Yeah. Blair, come. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um so when the first like 5 seconds of Tangled is Pascal, right? And I watched it like the weekend that it came out in the movie theater and my boyfriend at the time, like the first 5 minutes I was like, "Oh my god, he's going to be my favorite." And my boyfriend at the time was like, "How do you know? I bet he's not even like a full, you know, portion of the movie and he ended up being and I was like ha told you he's <laughs> hilarious and amazing and so I thought I was gonna have the same experience when I watched the Moana trailer I was like this freaking little pig is so cute he's gonna be my favorite part of the movie and he's in it for like two seconds and I was pissed I think that he needs like a spinoff like yeah. how they do like the little shorts and stuff yeah I think that he needs like his own little adventure I agree because he has yeah. such a fun personality and he's so cute yeah missed opportunity like i love him that's why i got the plushie of him <laughs> like look how freaking cute he is if you don't watch it on youtube you're missing out missing out turn off the podcast on apple <laughs> podcast or whatever you're listening on and go to youtube uh- <laughs> blair i'm gonna need you to not our cats are crazy all right so the whole point of season three the question that we set out to answer was in a divided world what is it that can bring people together? Mm-hmm. We see all kind of different people at the parks. We have talked with a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds. It's been a really cool season um, to really try to understand what makes, what brings us together, what connects us, what is special about this specific thing. Yeah. So did we do it? Did we figure it out? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we will never have like one singular answer but i do feel like we've like let's take it as like we 
had a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like we did prove what we set out to do. Like, we interviewed a large number of people, like, very different from each other. Um, And the one thread that brought them all together is that they're in love with these magical worlds. And I thought it was interesting, too, that even the people that like the people that were the deepest in it, the people that were, you know, cast members or had worked through the, the DCP and things like that, that have seen behind the scenes, the ones that could say like, here are the problems that exist. They still love it. Mm-hmm. I think that one of the most surprising moments was our second episode with uh, Gabby when you asked about the DCP and, you know, from your experience up to that point, your friends saying things like, yeah, I did the DCP and it ruined my experience for this yeah. specific park. And that's kind of all you had heard. Yeah. And for her to be like, no, I love it more. And it just opened my eyes to like the real magic that's happening behind the scenes. And then that kind of was consistent throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think anyone said I did the DCP and I hated my life and I never wanted to go back to Disney again. You right. Know? Yeah. Even, even the last episode that we had where she really did truly have a terrible experience yeah. and, and for like medical reasons and other you know, she still loves Disney and is making park content. Yeah, and, like, like, (laughs) moved here to be closer to the parks and, yeah. Yeah, so even the people who say, like, yeah, Disney is a company and companies are not perfect and there's a lot of problems and we are not anywhere close to inclusion and and representation to the level that we should be in 2022, like, they still love the, the content and they still find things that are magical and they still connect. I feel like... I feel like that you bring up a great point in just that sentence alone is that so many people I said that and I was like, so many kids in our <laughs> house. <laughs> so many people hold Disney to this like astronomical standard. And I don't think people actively realize that like, Flawed human beings are the people running this company. So why are we holding them to, you know, like anything that humans have their hands in is not going to be perfect, you know? And so to say, yes, Disney messed up on this. Yes, Disney is really trying to work on inclusion. Are they 100% there yet? Absolutely not. But I think the fact that they're now realizing that they need to make an effort, that they need to tell stories of all humanity instead of just one aspect shows that they, they're they trying and that we shouldn't be like, oh, well, yeah, but it's not enough. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why I went on that tangent. <laughs> no, it's good. Something you said triggered me. So, uh, one, one of the recurring themes that kept, you know, I, I knew when we asked that question initially, I knew this was going to be an answer. That's just, I know where, I know what you're getting is. at, yeah. So people kept talking about nostalgia. You know, I grew up going to the like parks. I feel like we're doing a movie seeing... commentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the commentary of season three. <laughs> but no, people saying, saying that over and over, you know, it's all yeah. about the nostalgia for me. And mm-hmm. I 100% understand why that is that way for so many people. But I do not relate to that because <clears throat> I have zero nostalgia for Disney. Yeah. Like, the Disney films that I have seen, I did see a few growing up. I saw them once growing mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing Lion King with my cousins at some family event that I, you know, I wasn't probably supposed to be watching it to begin with. So, Me things like Potter. that. And then I, I I, literally have not seen, I saw Lion King again when I was in college or something like that. Like, that's, I don't have the nostalgia. Yeah. And I did not go to the parks. My first time at the parks was in college. Mm-hmm. So, for me... I was really excited to to hear some of the other answers beyond that because that's more where like I connect in. And so the people who talked about the story, I am going to kick this cat out. She's just going to scratch and whine more <laughs> if you close the door. Not if I put her outside. Oh, good call. Come see. Pause for a brief moment while Jonathan kicks the cats out of the apartment. <laughs> Should I take the Pegasus? <laughs> and we're back and katie has has pegasus which means i have nothing to do with my hands i whispered in the mic i said should i switch out the pegasus 
Here you I'm can just have gonna it hold back. This I just pillow. wanted to rise. I just want to get it to rise out of you. Thank you. Rise of the resistance. <laughs> um. Anyway, what I was saying yes. was what what I really connected to was more along the lines of story because mm. as a kid, the thing that I loved to do more than anything in the world was read books mm-hmm. because I liked being transported to other worlds and meeting other people, and I that's why I like to travel and that's why I like to experience new things because that was like what I grew up doing every day. Yeah. And so for me, like the reason I, I connect to these things as an adult, you know, like these kid stories or whatever, like they're not really kid stories, but the the classic Disney films that I'm kind of watching for the first time as a 20 something, I'm connecting to them because of the story level and, you know, mm-hmm. talking like what Joe, I, that was one of my favorite moments in yeah, the whole season was when Joe- Yeah, me too. I was about to bring Joe, that up talked about seeing her anxiety and panic attacks watching Elsa. Yeah. It's those, <clears throat> like, it's those moments that exist because these are made by, like, very talented, creative people who understand that they're doing more than making kids' stories. They're yeah. They're doing more than just making something to entertain some kids on a, on a Saturday morning. Like, they're making really beautiful stories that really are about the world that we live in that anyone can connect to. And that's what makes everything so special for me. So I see the story side of it and then I go to the parks and then I see them like letting you live in the story, Mm -hmm. like you get to be a part of it. And that's why I think it's so profoundly different than a lot of other things that are out there. A lot of other theme parks that are out there. That's what, that's what to me makes it not feel like a theme park. Right. Right. So there's, yeah, there's lots of other theme parks. Um, there's lots of other production companies and I, there's lots of really great storytelling, you know, organizations out there. And, you know, I love watching a 24 films because they're so weird. And, you know, again, that's like pulling you into something that you've never seen mm-hmm. before and still finding some like connection to humanity in there. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is that I, like you, I knew we were going to go into it and everybody was going to say nostalgia or some some variation of that like it reminds me of my childhood which I totally get I have that aspect unlike you like I I remember all of those I mean I just told you that's why Hollywood Studios is my favorite park like growing up and going to MGM and loving it so much um and watching the Little Mermaid every day until I basically broke my VHS and um but I think the root of that is what you're saying too is that It's like, I don't know why I keep bringing this up this week, but if you go to AMC, you all know that Nicole Kidman, like tiny AMC like film before the movie. And there's a line that always really resonates me, resonates with me when I watch it. And I can't remember it verbatim, but basically she says like, we love it so much because we see the best parts of ourselves in the heroes in the films that we're watching. And I think that this nostalgic aspect and the point that you're bringing up is in tandem with each other because growing up, you see the hero that you want to be and basically it's just our shared humanity. Like these characters, even when we're watching them at five years old, we might not realize that Elsa's dealing with anxiety or that Hercules is having an identity crisis or, you know, we don't necessarily see the adult level of these films, but that shared humanity is what makes them like, it's what makes us able to like grow up with them. Yeah. It's like when you're a kid, you're watching and you're seeing this princess who is your true hero and you're like, I want to be her when I grow up. And then when you grow up, you're like, oh, like, I see now what they were pointing out mm-hmm. about how, like, she had these issues that she was dealing with and things were not sunshine and roses, but despite all of that, and you kind of get the, like, deeper story to it. So now that you're grown up with her, you, she's still your hero and you want to be her because you're seeing how she's able to, like, overcome the obstacles in her life yeah. or, like, deal with the crazy world that she lives in that is beyond her control and learning to be okay with that, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. And I feel like that's why Disney is so successful at reaching people like me and you I mean, answer honestly. Do you actually enjoy going to the parks or do I just drag you them? <laughs> no, I like going. <laughs> That's what I thought. But like you just said. you. I don't like people. The people's a lot. But the yeah. actual like, like park, the park activities yeah, are yeah, very yeah, fun yeah, yeah. and I do enjoy. Um, yeah. But that just shows like 
that's a testament to Disney and its story creation and telling because I grew up with The Little Mermaid, so I'm excited to meet her and ride her ride, but you didn't, and you're just as excited to experience now, all the... You get what I'm saying, though? I like, did grow up with Winnie the Pooh, which is why I make you ride Winnie the Pooh in Magic Kingdom. Yes. Because <laughs> that one is nostalgic. Yes. But you get it, too. Like, you almost have the best of both worlds because you've experienced, like, that love and excitement because of the nostalgia, and then the love excite- and excitement just because of, like, the shared humanity in Disney's content. Mm-hmm. For sure. I got distracted because we have a fish. Silence. No, I was looking. <laughs> my fish is in the corner, and I got very distracted watching it. It just caught my attention. <laughs> so, uh, completely unrelated, just a question that I want to know. Interesting. Um, what you know, especially in the lightning round, we we stumbled upon a few hot takes. Yeah. And I want to know, like, what was the hot take that like. W- really shook you to your core like what was the hottest take on season three? Oh, i don't know i feel like i need to go i have one in my head them. but <laughs> uh, i don't know if <sighs> okay maybe you can tell me yours after because i'm really blanking on something that like shook me to my core i will say though i'm a little comforted that people aren't as like vibing with Toy Story as I am Mm. because I always thought that that was like something that was wrong with me like don't get me wrong Toy Story the first film I think Toy Story Toy Story is for little boys that's fair Toy Story was everything that I needed it to be and I adore it to this day and I went on a road trip with a Jesse doll because it meant a lot to me and that was something I had from my childhood yeah so I, I I can see why having the like predominantly female guests that you had that's fair that maybe did not vibe with it as much yeah i can understand why maybe they did not vibe i with was it pretty much. surprised i was pretty surprised that a large portion of people were like yeah i think toy stories overrated I mean, it's, it's cowboys and space rangers and they're having a little adventure <laughs> here's what i think though is that i don't think the first film is overrated i think I think it should have ended quicker than the, like I, I feel the like first, they're the first milking two are perfect. it for as all as they can yeah. get out. The first two are perfect. The third mm-hmm. one was good, but I've never seen it again. I've Same. seen the first two multiple times, and then the fourth one I will never watch again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I don't care about Forky. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. It, the, no, the offense. animation was beautiful, but yeah, it was too far. The first one had the most heart. Of, like, Even the any third Pixar one was almost ever. a little too far. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to watch it again. Yeah, I mean it. I actually thought they were gonna kill them all in that like furnace. <gasps> Me too. I was like, this Pixar are gonna it's end like, Toy this Story got three morbid. with morbid. <laughs> but I remember, but yeah, I remember franchise, walking out of the third best sequel to a film that's like ever happened. It was insane that they were to pull off a sequel that good. And then after that, it was like we don't need a third and a fourth. Like the first two are perfect. Let's just keep the it there. sequel was popping, but it's not the best got... Disney sequel. Mm- not best Disney sequel, but I, what I'm saying is it's very it's hard It's a very to pull. solid. It's very hard to pull <clears throat> off a sequel. And on Rotten Tomatoes, the sequel actually has a higher score than the original, oh. which never happens oh. ever. Okay. Is what wild. is your, what do you think the best, absolute best Disney sequel is? <laughs> it's High School Musical 2, hands down. I do like High School it's, Musical it's 2 high school more musical than High School Musical 2, one. hands no. down. Because we get... We get so much better songs. We get the, the we get the guys like doing that random like beat dance thing in oh, the yeah. kitchen with like the pots and the yeah, pans yeah, and yeah. crap. They like have a Tarzan moment. Yeah, uh, we have. We get the golf course. We have the golf course. We have Sharpay Evans being a on a pink stunning piano. queen. We have the ba- the baseball. Just the baseball scene is beyond okay, good. Okay, I agree. Is a, is a flawless sequel. I will say though that the best sequel in Disney history that I would argue is better than its um, first one is Frozen. Oh no, that's valid. Like being serious, yes, <laughs> that one's really good. <laughs> John is just one of the biggest High School Musical stands I've ever met in my life. So I, I literally should have guessed that you were gonna yeah. say High School Musical too. Is for. I, I was really bummed it did not get any love this season, so, like, I'm making it happen in, in the finale. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough High School Musical love in season three. We can bring, we can incorporate well, High School Musical Well, I feel Musical like, so, four. Let, that's an interesting point, too. I feel like, I don't know if people just 
get this conception because of like this is a Disney podcast in Orlando or next to the theme parks and the theme cart theme parks are pretty much based around like the OG animation and stuff like that. But I feel like when you ask people like their favorite Disney films and you were talking about things like that, the only person that gave us an answer that was not like a classic golden age of Disney animated film was Phil who said Tron, which is, that's a whole other story. Phil is an enigma of his own. (laughs) But, but like for me, I feel like there are so many great, like, you know, like the DCOMs and yeah, you know, there even, were even great the, DCOMs. Like the shows, like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, mm-hmm. fantastic content. Like there's so much more to the, the company That's than so just- That's a raven. Right? So like, wow. I was really surprised to, to not hear anybody talking about those because really those were more, more than the animation. That's what brought me into the Disney world. That is true, yeah. Because I got- You I had got, more exposure to Disney yeah. Channel. Because and... I, well, because Disney, so- I was not supposed to be watching stuff ever. Uh, that's just how I grew up. And my parents let me get a laptop, which was a terrible idea. I was 15 when I got it. And that was right around the time that Hulu first came out. So like internet TV. And then Disney, actually, you could go to their website and you mm-hmm. could watch Disney Channel content. You yeah. can watch all of it, but like they had featured stuff. So between the two of those... I like got my first introduction to like popular television Mm -hmm. beyond just going to friends' houses. So I would watch Hannah Montana and Sweet Life of Zack and Cody as a high schooler. Like I was just getting into it. I was like, this stuff is awesome. Like it's so much fun. Which is so interesting because that is like the time that I was aging out of it. Right. You were like, this is not cool anymore. I need to be more mature. Trying to watch like MTV and. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think that for me, I was surprised to not hear as much love for like the high school musicals mm-hmm. and yeah, the true. Disney Channel originals and things like that. I want to circle back to the hot take that yes. shook you in the lightning round because I'm very interested. <laughs> it was just that The Lion King was not a good film. Oh, <laughs> I kind of felt validated in that too. I... There are people who will fight me tooth and nail for The Lion King and I get it. Okay, it it's a good film. A Lion King one and a half is better, but <laughs> that is truly the best sequel. But I mean, think about best so. Disney so sequel. for me, it's like I think the music. So story wise, I don't really care about the story. It's it's, it's Hamlet. It's, it's yeah. It's it's every tragedy that's ever been done. Like it's not a unique story, but I think that the music is mm-hmm. insane and yeah. the Broadway redo oh. is stunning and gives me chills every time yeah, I listen. Same. So I would kill to see that on Broadway. I saw it on Broadway once and it was amazing. Yeah. But it just really surprised me because in the in the midst of all the like love over the classic, you know, the the golden age, mm-hmm. you know, the Renaissance, and then yeah. one person was like, uh Lion King sucks. <laughs> and I, would, I hate it. <laughs> I wouldn't say it sucks, but I definitely will watch I won't pick The Lion King. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, we've never watched it together, I don't think. Yeah. I'll pick one and a half, though. One and a half every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> um, but along that, along those lines, were, were there any, beyond hot takes, were there any, like, big surprises for you, just things that you weren't expecting to hear, like, throughout the season? Because I feel like we kind of had a preconceived notion going in, like you said, testing a hypothesis we kind of knew what we thought the answer was going to be but we wanted to get some different people with different perspectives that we never met in a room and just hang out and see uh if we were right or if we were wrong or if there were some other things that we could unpack so i mean did you did you have any moments like that where you're like wow i never thought about it that way or that's a really good perspective or anything like that yeah i feel like a lot i feel like this is such a it's like a little onion. There's so many layers to this yeah. answer. Um, I always knew how big Disney was. I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's a beast. And literally everyone in the entire world knows its name. Um, But I always feel like it kind of felt just like, this is my personal thing. Like, you know, like I love it so much and I have such a personal connection to it that it, it was, it was kind of almost overwhelming to hear so many people 
who grew up so differently than I did in so many different parts of the world that I did that literally had like a regurgitated experience of growing up with Disney that I did. Right. You know? Um, it, I am not unique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I may, I don't know if that's just the Enneagram four in me. That's like, why? My well, yeah, like, I, mean, I have to be an individualist. Especially like growing up where you grew up for you to be like, my whole identity is Disney. Like that's not really a thing that happens, you know, and people don't just like from your hometown move to Disney and start yeah. a podcast about Disney. But when you kind of what does that immer- say about me? But you immerse your <laughs> but you immerse yourself in a community of like minded <laughs> because of the internet. You were able to find a community of like minded individuals, <clears throat> and so mm-hmm. we we didn't really get a true sample of the population because we were talking with people true. who already told us that they liked Disney. True, and I feel like a lot of I feel like there were things that I loved about Disney that I didn't even know until someone literally like would express it like. You know, people who didn't say nostalgia for what they loved about it. Like, they would say, I don't know, now I can't even remember. We should, we really should have gone back and listened to them before. Because I feel like, I feel like it's all a blur. But I feel like people would bring up points like, this is why Disney resonates with me or this is why I love it so much. And I would, I would, I don't think I ever disagreed with any of them. And I was like, wow, there are so many reasons like subconsciously that I was gravitating towards Disney and I didn't even know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it was always really refreshing to, to hear just some different perspective Mm -hmm. because again, we, we are kind of in our own little bubble here and see things a certain way, Yeah, but you know, it really was a good opportunity to chat with people that we not we would not have gotten the opportunity otherwise. You yeah. know, they, they would not have been in our circle. No, we wouldn't and, have gotten the opportunity to meet or And I feel like we've made some friends out of it too. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. I feel like that's been the biggest gift that this podcast has given us is yeah. that I feel like any of them, any of the guests that weren't originally friends with us, we like if they would come to the parks, we would hang out. Absolutely. Like for the ones that don't live here. And then the ones that do live here, we've actually hung out with. I'm going to give a little teaser. <laughs> no. <laughs> leave that in. I'm not leaving that That was that in. the weirdest sneeze ever. Did you hear that? Like, <laughs> at the end. <laughs> I'm going to give a little teaser for season four. And that is we're still going to do guests because we absolutely love chatting with oh, guests. Oh, yeah. And literally, we're not even joking. Like, if you want to be on the podcast and you want to hang out with Katie and chat with her about your love of Disney, just reach out. Like, DM on all the platforms because uh, we would love to talk with you and hang out and make more friends. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even if you don't live in Orlando or you don't go... if Even if you've been to Disney once or you've never been to a park, like, literally... Or Harry Potter. I feel like Harry Potter needs to get a little bit more love on this um, podcast. But also basic content in general because... Yeah, basic content in general for sure. Um, yeah, we're definitely not getting rid of the lightning round and we're definitely not getting rid of guests. But that's all we'll tell you about season four. If you were watching on YouTube, you'd see me awkwardly <laughs> smiling at the camera. <laughs> Um, I feel like <laughs> you should let us know if you want more Jonathan on season four. I'm cutting that out. I'm Why? Just, I'm, teasing, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm leaving it. In. Um, use your powerful also, evil you know, I'm, I guess we're kind of at a natural point to chat a little bit about season four because I kind of segued us there. Mm-hmm. Master interviewer here. I mean, do you want us to talk about just, season three anymore? No, we might get back to it, but okay. I just I just wanted to <laughs> kind of wrap. Oops. See, it is really easy to bump. It is. I see. You yell at me all the time for bumping them, and it's so easy. (laughs) That's why I need to just keep my hands on Pegasus and not move them around. Uh, But what I was saying is just to kind of wrap up this little topic, so we Mm -hmm. don't have to like talk about it again later. Okay. Uh, With season four, is that it will be in the fall. We are going to take a little bit of a break, but in the interim, um, if there's things that you guys want to hear more of, like we just talked about, there's not been a lot of Harry Potter content. There's not been a ton of like just basic stuff in general. Uh, so if you have ideas about things that you would love to hear more about, definitely be reaching out in the next few months as yeah. we're kind of building out our plans for the, the coming season. 
and then you know just be following on everything to see when stuff starts to to launch in the fall yeah and i know a couple of people have said like that they want us to they want to see us go more towards like kind of the topics that we talked about in seasons one and two like disney tips like Mm. park tips and things like that so if there's like you know how to do disney on a budget or all about disney cruises or you know like something that we could either have a solo episode of us because it's our own experiences or maybe find like a dcl cast member to talk about the cruise line or cruises or you know you know what i'm saying like yeah um if there's like park specific questions that you want answered or topics that you want discussed it doesn't necessarily have to be like focused around a certain guest you know we could find a guest that could go with any topics and we could also do solo episodes too absolutely so stay on the lookout definitely reach out if you've got ideas we love to hear that and yeah. definitely reach out if you want to be interviewed because yeah especially if you, you have like a small disney business or things like that like we would love to highlight like disney or harry potter creators and awkward smile more awkward smiles yeah i'm telling you you gotta be on the youtubes <laughs> yeah that's where it's at <laughs> the youtubes is what's happening that's where all the kids are at YouTube's these days is where it's at feel like the youtubes is where they're at and that's the tiktoks it's it the is TikToks the tiktoks where the kids are at and then like the millennials are on youtube mm-hmm. and then the gen xers are listening to the are podcast. on the podcast apps yeah <laughs> <laughs> also we need more gen xers on the podcast so hit us Do up we? yeah we only had like one <laughs> my mom <laughs> yeah no she's a boomer no she's not she's, she's not an ex how my grandpa was a boomer. No, my dad, my parents are boomers. My parents are younger than your parents. Not much. Your dad's not much. He's like two years I younger. don't think my mom's a boomer. We'll I look it up after this. <laughs> also, speaking of favorite episodes, uh, your mom roasted you for an entire solid hour. It was pretty fantastic. We're going to have more Renee Stanford content coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. They're actually coming to visit next month, so. Yeah, it'll actually be an in-person, they meaning my mom and my yeah. sister. So yeah. it'll actually be an in-person episode. I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but it probably will be like the first or second episode of season four. So stay tuned for that. Love it. It's sure to be a, f- a fun time. <laughs> um, I, I feel like we've commentaried probably enough. I mean, people can listen to the episodes and, and hear all the stuff that we talked about, but it's nice to kind of wrap things up mm-hmm. and kind of put our perspective. All that being said, is there any like final thoughts, anything that you wish that you had maybe expressed more clearly throughout the, the season or anything that you you know, looking back, something that you want to leave your listeners with, um, just kind of like moving forward into out of season three into season four into a different thing, like any little bow that you want to put on season three. Yeah, um, I think I think at the beginning of this season, I was very broken down um, for a lot of reasons, but also just a majority of just what we've been through the last couple of years and I when you presented the idea of let's do only guest based you know call it the one with all of my friends um and you know that'll be a way to kind of experiment with what we want the podcast to look like going forward I don't know. I I feel like I just, it weighed on me so heavy. Like, I just want to produce something that celebrates our differences and celebrates things that can be joyous, that bring us together in a world where I feel like every single other thing that we consume is like, <clears throat> its goal is to just divide us on like, these people think differently than you and these people look different than you and so they're wrong or bad or these people do, you know, believe these certain things and, you know, that's not right. So I truly hope that you you had that experience as a listener listening to season three, like you felt that celebration of 
diversity and shared humanity. And yeah, I mean, I thought that I knew that Disney brought together so many people, but it was always so fun, genuinely, to sit down with someone so different than me and hear about how different their childhood was, how different their life experiences have been, how different their struggles are to me, and yet we've come to the same conclusion about a lot of things and we're in this community. You know? Yeah, I love that. And I think one of the biggest takeaways, too, just from Katie's experience, like I can testify that when we talked about this initially, she was terrified of reaching out to people and trying to find guests. And then it turns out if you ask people to be on your podcast, they just are like, yeah, sure. Yeah. (laughs) Surprisingly, like the community that has kind of been built up around Disney is a very special welcoming place. And I think that Katie really saw that. Yeah. So take that to heart as well like if you want to get to be friends with somebody just reach out with them and exactly the worst thing that happens is that they don't answer but i mean i feel like most yeah i mean we gonna... had i mean i reached out to people that just didn't answer yeah, and that that's fine but at least shoot your shot they're not gonna like <laughs> they're not gonna be mean about it like you're not gonna no not, not at gonna all end terribly. and i even reached out to people who like said no mm-hmm. and no none of them were like Ew, no. Yeah. Like all of them were like, I would love to, but I've got this going on or, yeah, you know. So shoot your shot. Mm-hmm. We want to be friends. Yes. Stay tuned for season four. I think we're going to wrap up here. Okay. Kind of close it out. So as always, make sure that you're following on all of the social medias, mm-hmm. including the TikToks, the YouTubes, the Instagrams. I love how they're all think, plural. I don't think we have a Facebooks. We, we do, but I, it's basically the same as the Instagrams. Just follow on the Instagrams. Exactly. Um, if we technically have a Twitter too, but yeah, I hate Twitter. If you want to be, if you want to run our Twitter page, <laughs> you let me know. Yep. Because I will be very willing to have someone run our Twitter page. Absolutely. If you want to fund the ear wall, uh huh. Uh, definitely throw some money at the podcast on on the apps yeah. and we'll add some more ears actually if we could pan up a little bit we we added another yeah, row yeah we added so an- another row we're... we also added a couple of my new little mermaids are here again the new if you're bar. not watching on youtube oh, yeah. you're not seeing you're the ear out. wall so um and the tiana one they can't see the tiana one oh, they can't see the top it's row too high Oh, I see. Anyway, season four, you'll be able to see more ears. I'll I'll readjust. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, with like a, I think a good way to wrap up too is just that um, if you want to be involved in any way, shape, or form with this podcast, I think one thing that we've really loved about season three is just the collaboration of it all, and it hasn't felt isolating. Because sometimes I feel like creative work can feel very isolating. Like you're spending all of these hours just by yourself and then putting something out into the world and you don't know how it's going to be received, you know? So if you want to be a part of the podcast in any way, shape, or form, a guest, if you have like just topic ideas that you want to send our way if you have video ideas for our youtube channel that you want to send our way if you want to run our twitter page if you want to help with social media like any way shape or form that you want to be involved just reach out i mean i don't think we can take everyone if like a huge portion of you is like yes if let's 76 do it 76 people want to run the twitter <laughs> account simultaneously uh, but you have a pop in twitter y- you know what i'm saying though like <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah, it goes along with what you were saying, like, just shoot your shot. Like, if you want, if you think that, that being a part of a Disney podcast would be fun and cool, reach out to us. And if we have a space for you, then we would love to have you in any capacity that you're interested in. So absolutely, we want to use this to become friends with people and... I don't know. I'm rambling. You're rambling, but it's but fine. you know what I'm. Yes, you know I, what I, mean. I know exactly what you mean, and I think that the listeners will be beating down the doors of your virtual. I'm sure they will. Instagram direct messages. I don't know how the internet works. 
uh we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here thank you guys so much for listening and watching on the youtubes why is everything <laughs> plural i don't know it's been a day it has i truly. could ramble about that but uh anyway we are going to take a few months off we will see you again in the fall thank you so much for being a part of this really special season yeah. we've had a blast putting it together for you and if you think that i am a fantastic uh fill-in host leave a comment down below maybe i'll do it again yes we'll <laughs> jonathan was so adamant about not wanting to be on the show and i'm so glad i i have felt very comfortable with you sitting right across from me you should it's like our five-year anniversary <laughs> <laughs> no i just think we vibe really well yeah we should we <laughs> we've been married for five years and cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> wait are we really gonna end it like that thank you so much for listening i hope you enjoyed it be sure to follow the pod and let me know what you thought of today's episode all of our links are in the show notes and description box down below. And if you're listening to today's episode, please give us a rate and review. And don't forget to include your Instagram handle to be featured as our basic of the week. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I upload new episodes on Wednesday and other videos for more Magic Mondays. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Until then, basics, stay magical.